Okay, perfect. All right, everyone. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm Ashley, this is Russell. Today we are going to be making a slime jar container in the shape of a cute little elf. If you guys were here for our Halloween version, we were also the ones that did the monster slime and the monster slime container. So we are repeating our performance for the holidays with our little elf. We will also be making the slime to go in it today. So two crafts, which is very exciting. So um, first, before we get started, um, if you have any questions during the uh, classroom, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and our moderator can um, shout them out to me. We also love to hear what you're doing while we're crafting. So if I'm using a different color than you or you want to tell me what you're working on, I'd love to hear about that as well. So please feel free to use that Q&A functionality. Um, I'm going to go over a list of all of the ingredients first that we're going to need today and then we'll go ahead and get started. So for the slime jar container, um, the number one thing that you're going to need is a slime jar. This is one um, that we use, which is a, a little eight ounce jar. So if you want to use this one, uh, or if you have a different one, um, please make sure that you have just a little container that has a, a screw top lid. The other thing that we will be using today are buttons. So I have just a little bag here of just plain wood buttons. You can use any types of buttons. We'll be painting these, but if you don't have buttons um, that need to be painted, if you have buttons that are already painted or different colors, you uh, can feel free to use those. If you don't have buttons, really just anything that are gonna be sort of decorative for us to glue on to represent the elves outfit. Um, is what we will be using today. If you do have buttons and you want to paint them, um, we are going to be painting ours black. Again, you can pretty much choose any different type of colored paint that you want um, for the buttons if you would like to paint them. And then obviously you will need something to paint them with, either a paintbrush or if you have some of these sponge applicators. I would also recommend that before we get started that you make sure that you have a surface area that's okay to get messy. So as you can see, we've put a little bit of um, cardboard on top of the table. We also have paper plates just to help sort of contain the mess of the paint. And then with this craft, if you were to go online, there was a template that we are going to use to cut out the pieces of felt to make the elf's hat, his ears, and his collar. So hopefully you were able to access that. If not, it is um, on our website at michaels.com classes. If you search for this craft, you should be able to pull up the template. If you are not able to print it out, we can also walk through just some easy ways just to sort of freehand the pieces as well for you on the felt. I do have a marker, which will help me um, trace out the outline on the felt for us to cut, as well as scissors. And then obviously then we do have some felt. So I'm going to be using some green, red, and brown felt today. You can use any colors that you want for your elf if you have them. If you don't have felt, you can also use construction paper, or if you have foam, foam also works really well. Just any sort of surface that you want to use to cut out um, for your elf's outfit. And then finally for our slime jar, we are going to be decorating him with some fuzzy pipe cleaners. You can see we also have one that had kind of like a feather boa. So really it's just anything that you have that you might want to use to decorate the outside of your elf's hat, whether that's pipe cleaners or the chenille stems, boas, if you have other types of material that you want to use, um, you are also welcome to use that. Okay, did I cover everything, Russell? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay, wonderful. So first step that we're going to do today is, um, oh, you're very right, I'm so sorry. I did forget one last thing. You are also going to need glue. 
So you can use um, just regular craft glue, or if you have an adult with you that's helping out, you can also use a glue gun. So I will be using both today. Um, I will be using the glue gun for some of the uh, parts to get the elves outfit onto the jar, but please make sure that you have adult supervision or have an adult with you if you're going to be using any sort of heating tools like that. Um, otherwise, the regular craft glue will work just fine. So for step number one, we are going to decorate our buttons. I'm going to, yes ma'am. Question, uh, can we use an a mason jar to put it in? I'm sorry, a what kind of jar? A mason jar. Yes, you can use a mason jar. Um, that's absolutely fine. I think that the size of the lid will probably be fairly comparable. If you are using a different size jar, with a different size lid, you may need to tweak the size of the template. The template that um, we provided and that we will be using today, this was made to fit around this size. And so if you're doing anything that's a little bit smaller or larger, you may need to adjust it just a bit, um, but it should be fairly easy to adjust. And we'll walk through that as well when we get to those steps. All right, so, for our button decorating, we are going to be using two buttons. These you can see are just regular wooden buttons. Again, if you have other things that you'd like to use like pom-poms or beads or anything like that, you're more than welcome to. And Russell's gonna help me out on this with painting these buttons black. So I'm gonna take my paper plate and I'm just going to put a little bit of paint. You don't need a lot, the buttons are pretty small. So probably just about the size of a nickel. So as you can see, just a little bit of paint there. And Russell's gonna go ahead and start painting those buttons for me. Do you wanna use the sponge applicator or do you wanna use the paintbrush? Paintbrush, all right. So he's gonna start working on that. I'm gonna move the camera over just a little bit so that you can see that better. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna get um, a paper towel just because if we have any messes, um, we wanna make sure that we have something available to sort of wipe those off. And while he's working on the buttons, I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut out our templates and kind of talk through some of those as well. So if you were able to print them out, you do just want to go ahead and cut out each of the individual pieces. So someone's asking if we can use pom-poms instead of buttons. Yes, I think pom-poms are a great idea to use instead of buttons. I actually have some pom-poms over here. Oh my goodness, sorry. So I did buy some of these, which I thought would be good to use as mix-ins for our slime as well. Um, so these have some like red and green and different colors. And so I actually thought this might be a fun alternative if you wanted to use these instead of the buttons, or even if you don't have the large pipe cleaners, they may be good as well to use as um, decorations for the elves hat. Perfect. And if you're using buttons, what size buttons are they? So these are just basic wooden buttons um, that you can buy in our craft button section. If you have other types of buttons, um, a lot of times, you know, like I have a box of buttons that are just loose buttons that I always sort of keep as extras in case I need them. And so sometimes if you ask um, a parent or an adult if they have extra buttons around, they might be able to provide some of those as well for you. You get some paint on your hands. Yeah, I got a lot. Okay. Yeah, buttons. One of the fun things is about buttons is since they are small, in order to get them fully painted, you probably are gonna get some paint on your hands. So I'm just gonna help Russell out and sort of finish off the edge of those just to make sure that 
all of the sides are nice and covered with paint. Okay, and then I'm just gonna set these off to the side to dry. So I'm gonna move my plate and my paintbrush over. I'm gonna wipe my fingers off a little bit. That's good. The nice thing about um, acrylic paint, which is what we're using, is that it is washable. So if you get a little bit on your hands, um, just make sure that you wash it with warm water and soap later. It's a little bit harder to get out of clothes. So again, make sure that you are um, using a surface that um, is okay to get paint on, or if you're wearing a shirt or something, um, make sure that it's a shirt that you don't mind getting a little bit of paint on if, if accidents happen. So our buttons are now over there and drying. So we're going to take our templates And we're going to start with the piece that is going to end up being uh, the hat. So as you can see, this almost kind of looks like um, a skirt with the way that it is shaped and then round across the bottom. So if you were not able, if you were not able to print out the template, um, making something a little bit like this uh, is going to be helpful in creating the hat. We're going to take our green felt and I'm going to position this kind of in the in the corner just to make it easier to get to when we cut. And I'm going to take my marker and you can use a marker or a pen, um, just anything that is going to help you sort of outline on the felt. And we're just going to start making that outline. And while we're doing this, if you are using a different color felt than green, I would love to hear what colors you all are making the hats for your elves. So while we wait for those answers, um, someone would like to know if you could uh, show us how to make the, um, you know, if we weren't able to, to print out the template you show us how to make that again? Absolutely. So I'm going to use, if you're not able to do the template, one of the easiest things to do is to take your jar and you want to start in one corner and kind of just put your finger and then wrap it around so that you can see what the circumference is of your jar. So you can kind of see I've sort of wrapped it around like this. And I would mark where you need to. So that when I undo it, I could see, okay, I went from this corner all the way to this corner with my jar lid. So that's how long I know I need to make my felt. And then for a hat, it's basically a triangle that is wrapped into a cone. So if you've been working on um, three-dimensional shapes in school, you will know that a cone is basically just a triangle that's been wrapped around. So if you did not have the template, another thing you could do is after you measure the length that you need for your jar lid, you could get a straight edge, like a ruler, and then just make a triangle. So you would make a triangle a side up to here. And then you could make a side down to here so that when you cut out that piece, it would be a triangle that you could then wrap into the cone of your hat. So with the template on the paper, 
we will go ahead and cut this out. If you are using scissors, please make sure that um, you have permission to use them or you have adult supervision. Did we have any answers on if anyone was doing different colors of felt? Yes, um, not that many, but everybody said red. Oh, red, kind of like a, like a Santa yeah. hat. That's a good color. Yeah, something like that. Someone liked red because it matches their socks. Very nice. Okay. Oh, and we have a yellow as well. Also good. And um, just a reminder, we, we're getting a lot of questions about the slime. Um, we're going to do the jar first, and then we'll go over to the slime. So don't worry, your question. I know the slime is the fun part, but it's also the really messy part. So I left that one for last because when my hands are super messy, I didn't want to have to go back and make, um, make a jar for it. Plus, we needed our jar ready to be able to put the slime in. All right, so I have cut out this. You can see again, it kind of looks like a triangle with a curved edge. And that's what we will be using for our, our elf hat. The next thing that we are going to do is the collar of the elf hat. So if you can see on here, he's got a little bit of a collar sitting down and yeah, Russell did a good job on this one earlier today. So this is the next part that we will be making. The collar is actually really easy. It is just a straight line that has kind of jig jag edges. So if you do not have the template or were not able to make the template, again, a really good way to do it without it is just to measure how much felt is needed to go around and then mark that. And then you can see when we put the template down and then it's just making the jig jag edges, which you can do on your own too, if you want. And you don't have to do it like this if you want more scalloped edges and you want them to be a little bit more round. That's obviously something that you can do as well, or you can make yours wavy. We're going to do this one though. So I'm going to keep it on the edge because that's already an edge, so we don't have to draw that one. And then I'm going to just quickly trace out the rest. Again, doing my jig jag lines. And uh, I just posted the link to the template in the in the chat as well as the link to the video. It will be it's being recorded so you guys can see it in 24 to 48 hours if you want to watch it again or if you're a little behind. Okay. So this is what it looks like when I removed it. So if you were not able to do the template, this is kind of what you would be doing without the template is just making those, um, those little jagged shapes along the edge of the felt, um, which again, matched up with how much felt is needed to go around the edge of your, of your slime jar. Quickly, um, it's like um, the hat. Um, you you can just um, see where it goes, like on the hat, and then mm -hmm. just do the zigzags. Yeah, exactly. Because it they're exact the same size. That's true. So if you had already cut out, um, or you know, did a freehand version of your hat, that would have also been the same length needed 
for this part as well. So you could have used that also to help guide how long you needed it to be. Ashley, do you have any alternative to felt if someone doesn't have any? Yeah, so if you have any sort of like construction paper or colored paper, um, foam is also a good alternative. I have uh, adhesive foam sheets as well, which is what we had used on the monster jar back in, at Halloween. We used foam instead of felt. So really just any sort of colored fabric, piece of paper, etc., that you can cut into shapes in order to glue because we're using both craft glue and as I mentioned earlier, just the hot glue gun as well. So anything that takes glue well is going to be fine for, um, for decorating. This one always gives me a little trouble because it's a lot of back and forth. So it's a lot of moving the felt. All right, so we have our little collar that we're going to use. And then the last step is gonna be the ears. So the ears are probably gonna be the easiest ones to freehand if you did not have the templates because ears are pretty, elf ears especially, are pretty easy to draw. So you can see these are the ones that I cut out earlier when we were practicing. Oh, here they are. And so, oops. Oh my goodness, runaway ears. So they basically, oh, they almost look like light bulbs in the way that they're shaped. So they're shaped like regular ears, but they have a little bit of a point at the end. And then these, we left a little bit on the edge because that's where we're going to, to glue into the, to the slime jar. So that's sort of the shape that you want to use. So I'm gonna line mine up on my felt. And just again, trace those out. One. two. We are done with the marker so that can go away. And we're done with the templates so those can go away. Cut this out. Oops. Sticker on the back. I'm going to take that off. There we go. All right. So now we have two ears. We have a collar and then we have the top of the hat. 
Well, that kind of looks like a scary face right now. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the lid of our jar and we're going to put glue around the side of it. So you can use, again, just regular craft glue, which is what we're going to use for this part. I'm sorry, the light's making it a little difficult to see. Just regular craft glue. Or you can use um, hot glue gun, again, if, if you have an adult with you. So the nice thing about this is that it actually has a paintbrush already in it. So I'm just going to take the brush of the paint or the glue rather, sorry, and then just go around the sides of the jar. And you want to make sure that you get a lot of glue, not too much, you don't want it dripping off. But you definitely want to make sure that all of the surface area on the side of the jar is covered in paint. I'm going to go put puppy on the couch. Sorry, Russell's going to go help. We just got a puppy and he is very little and he cannot jump up on our couch yet, but that's where he likes to sleep. So Russell's gonna go help him get up on the couch so he can go and, and take a nap because puppies love naps. Okay, so when you get the glue all the way around the side, we're going to take our collar that we did and we're gonna start on one end and we're gonna press down. And you can see my, my little zigzag lines are facing down away from the top of the lid. And then I'm gonna press. And as I press, I'm going to move the lid. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. So pressing it in place so that it sticks to that glue and then sort of pinching it and moving so that it sticks to the edge. Right. Ashley, we have a couple of questions about glue. Yes. Um, the first one is, can we use school glue? And the, the second one is, I didn't hear that last question. It looks like you may be muted. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me, Ash? Okay, there we go. So the first one was, can we use school glue? And the second one is, what happens if we don't have glue? So yes, you can use school glue. Um, if you don't have glue, you might see if you have uh, double sided tape that may work for the felt. It will be make it a little bit more difficult for the pipe cleaners or some of the other little pieces that we're going to be using. So um, again, if you don't have any glue, this may be a good opportunity for you to revisit this part of the uh, craft um, tomorrow when it's posted. And when you have the, the glue available, or as I said, you can try tape if you have it, but I do think the tape's gonna make it a little bit harder when we get to some of the other pieces. Okay, so here is what that looks like then when we're finished. And then the next step is going to be the hat. So when we do the hat, we're going to be taking it and we're going to be wrapping it around to make it a cone. So remember a cone is just basically a three-sided or a three-dimensional triangle with a round base. So when we wrap it together, it makes the little elf hat shape. Now this is where I will be using hot glue gun. So again, 
please be sure that you have an adult av available to help with this part. You can also use the craft glue. I'm going to use just a couple of dots. A little bit of hot glue goes a long way. So you don't wanna to do too much. I'm just doing a couple of little dots around the side of the lid. And then similar to what we did with the red, I'm going to start on one end and press. And then I'm just going to work it around. And press as I go along where I have the glue. And I'm going to do a little bit of a dot here at the edge. And just complete that there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue along this edge of my hat so that I can fold this together and pinch it closed to finish the hat out as well. So I'm going to put, again, not a lot of glue, just a little bit. along the edge. And I'm going to fold my hat like this. And I'm just going to pinch it. To make that cone complete and finish out that seam. And if you want to do it all the way up at the top, you can add just a little bit more at the very tip top. Just fold that last little bit over and then pinch it shut. So that here is the hat now that that part is done. And you will have a seam on the back, but that can be the back of your jar. So that part won't have to be seen. And then this part is the front. So then we're going to add kind of our embellishments around. So I will be using a white big fuzzy pipe cleaner. Again, if you don't have pipe cleaners, this would be a great opportunity. If you have pom-poms, you can put pom-poms around the side, or if you have feathers, you can put feathers around the side. I'm gonna use my, um, my glue gun one more time, and I'm gonna start on the back. And I'm just gonna do a couple little dots again along the sides. And then with my pipe cleaner, I'm gonna start at the back with one end and I'm gonna press it down. And then same as we did with our others, I'm just gonna wrap it around the hat until I get to the other side with my palm or my stems rather. the little wispies away. So then here is my completed hat. So the last thing to do then is to screw this on to your lid. And then whichever way you want to be the front is where we're going to glue on the buttons. So 
So this part is where my seam is. So I'm gonna make this part the front. Thank you, Russell. So Russell got my, my buttons, which are now dry. And again, I'm just gonna do a little bit of glue, one tiny little dot here on the jar, and then another little tiny dot here on the jar. And then I'm gonna put my buttons on. Just hold it down for a few minutes, or a few seconds rather, so that it can adhere. And then same with our second. And then this finishes the jar for you. So you can see you have a cute little hat, little cone on his hat. He's got little fun fuzzies around and two cute little buttons. So I'm gonna set him off to the side and dry. And then we're gonna clean up our workstation and get ready to do our next. Oh, we forgot the ears. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How silly of me, I forgot these ears. Okay, so finishing touches, little ears little dab of glue on the side here. Take your ear and just press it in. And then same thing on the other side, little dab of glue there. Take your ear. So Ashley, we have some people um, that are having problems with a hat. They would like to see it again, but I don't know if we'll have time to make the slime and do the hat all over again. If you have time at the end, could we go through that again? Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and we'll move on to the slime just to make sure that we do cover that. And then I can go back and we can look at the hat one more time. So apologize that I left off our, our little elves ears at first. I was so excited about the slime, but here he is with his, with his ears. Wow. Okay. Could All right. Them. So we're going to move them off to the side. Russell, will you unplug the hot glue gun please for me? And we'll get that out of the way because we do not need it right now. So I'm going to move that so that we don't accidentally get burned. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to get ready. So for the slime, um, there are several recipes online. If you would like to look one up, we are going to be using one that is on, um, that's an Elmer's recipe today. So this over. So what we will be needing for the slime is you need a good slime mixing bowl. Please ask permission for a bowl from um, an adult just because you don't want to use one that should not have slime in it. So this is just an old bowl that I don't find if it gets slime in. Um, we will be using clear glue. You can use colored glue, regular white glue. You can use um, glitter glue. You can use glow in the dark glue. Really just basically any type of school glue is going to be, going to be good to use. We will also be using magic liquid today. This is just the easiest thing. I know there's lots of other different recipes. And so if you have a favorite recipe for slime that uses other types of materials, um, please feel free to use those. But this is washable, safe, non-toxic. So this is the, the one that we use in our house just because it's the easiest for us to use. Uh, any type of mix-ins that you want. So we have glitter, we have red glitter, we have green glitter. We have green food dye as well, which we're going to be using to make it uh, jolly and green. We have a spoon. We have this to help sort of mix it all in onto our surface. We have craft sticks. So really, again, just anything that you want to use that you don't mind if it goes in the trash afterwards or that it can be cleaned because again, slime is very messy. And then any other types of mix-ins that you want. So I know we talked about earlier using pom-poms. 
So these are some fun pom-poms that have red and green and they're sparkly, so that might be fun. You can also use beads or sequins or really anything that you want that just or, kind of like um, goes into this or line. Buttons. Or buttons, right? If you had just lots of extra buttons and you just want to do tons of buttons, also good. So I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Russell likes this part a lot well, actually, more than I do. Yes. Sorry about that. Before we get started, um, it looks like we lost video on your overhead camera. Oh, no. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if I can fix that. It's a little battery. It's probably why. Okay. Um, hold on. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. We're back. All right. Perfect. So, before we get started, again, my public service announcement to make sure that you are covering the surface of whatever you are getting ready to use to make the slime on um, with something like parchment paper, um, or I also have like a, a baking sheet here, just something that is okay to sort of contain the slime. Move all that to the side. We're gonna take our bowl, we are going to empty out the entire contents of one of our Elmer's glue. This is a five ounce bottle of glue. I'm just gonna dump that all in. <laughs> Can I do the rest? Yeah. Uh, hold on, before we do that, let's just do one real quick. Okay. And then if you have the magical liquid on the back, it gives you sort of the ingredients to use. And so the instructions it says for one batch is to empty the entire bottle of Elmer's glue into the bowl, which we did. And then to start by adding two teaspoons of the magical liquid. So I have a teaspoon. Ashley, could you explain what that magic um, liquid does? And also, is there any alternative for activators? Because it looks like a lot of kids don't have um, the magic liquid. So there are other recipes online that use different types of household um, chemicals that you may have. Um, for safety purposes, we can't recommend those just because they use things like contact solution or baking soda and things like that. So I can only recommend the magical liquid. Um, if you have an adult that can help sort of look up maybe some other alternative solutions, that's what I would recommend doing. Elmer's has a lot of different recipes on their website as well. So you can go to Elmer's and I think that there's a link in the instructions on this class as well for some of the best recipes that we have. So that would be my recommendation. So I'm going to start with two teaspoons of the magical liquid. Um, one of the questions was what does it do? So the magical liquid um, acts as an activator. So it basically takes the glue, which is inherently just very sticky, and it takes some of the stickiness away so that it becomes more like slime as we know it. So we're going to take the two teaspoons and then Russell, will you um, stir it and start stirring it in please for me? And let's see how, how slimy it gets. So for the glue part, is uh, school glue okay? I'm sorry, is what okay? School glue? School glue. Yes, that's absolutely fine. We used clear just because it helps take the color a little bit better, um, but you can use white glue, glitter glue, really any type of regular school glue. So uh, we're going to keep adding a little bit more, oh, hold it for me, of the magical liquid, just to make sure that we get this less like glue and more like slime. 
So if you're adding more in, you just want to do it sort of one teaspoon at a time so you don't get too much. And you think, Russell, how are we doing? Good. Let's see. We have a couple of questions about um, the coloring. Mm -hmm. uh, can we use food dye? And also, can we add the coloring first? Yes. So Russell, uh, please don't do that. Um, where did our food dye go? Yes. So if you want to add food dye, it does not take a lot. We're actually using some food dye as well. Um, we're going to be using green. And so what I would recommend is either pour a little bit in or you can take your craft stick. And you want to use a clean one because if you've had it in the glue, you don't want to then cross contaminate and have the, the glue into the food dye. But you can take just a little bit with your craft stick like this and then mix it in. <laughs> yeah, this is the part that Russell really likes. <laughs> and you can see we didn't use a whole lot and it's already very, very dark green. Okay. This is the one I made. Yeah. So I'm going to add just another little bit of the magical liquid in just because it still looks a little bit more like glue than slime. Mm -hmm. Definitely starting to look slimy though. <laughs> and then once here, let me see it real quick. I'm gonna help you out. And then once your slime does have that good kind of goopy, slimy consistency. We're going to pour it out onto our parchment paper. Almost like a cake batter. And I kind of spread it out a bit. Mm -hmm. Here, that's why I got this one. Ooh. I'm just going to spread that out. And this is where we're going to add in our mix ins. I do some. You want to do glitter? Yeah. You wanted to use any of the pom poms? Yes or no? No? Okay. All right. Russell has opted not to use pom poms. We are just going to use glitter which is totally fine. Okay. Yeah, that's gross. Okay, where do I put this? Uh, you can just set it down right there, that's fine. All right, so, yeah. That's fine, all right, can pour some in. Ooh, all right, that's probably good to start with. Yeah, some nice red sparkles. Okay, I'm gonna smish it off. Why don't we? <laughs> no. Here, let's start like this. Oh wow, this is definitely very messy. <laughs> So oh, I do kind of want to put in some of the pom poms. I would okay, I'm going to use a red one and a green. Do you want any like yellow or Wait, white? Can you give me like a handful? Yeah, maybe a handful. Oh, geez, that's a lot. That's a big handful. Okay. <gasps> <laughs> there we go. Lots of colorful mixes. We're just gonna keep mixing that up. I can't mix it in. Oh my 
I can't wait to touch it. Okay, well, we're not gonna do that because we're gonna go back and show people how to do the hat again. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna wait to get our, our hands dirty. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take one of our other jars that we made earlier today. And I'm going to, I'm gonna scrape up our slime and I'm gonna put it in our jar. Yes. Here, how about, how about you take this over and you can keep putting in the slime into the jar. Okay. And then I can go back and answer some of the questions about the hat. Now go to the other side of the table, buddy. Okay. Set it down first. All right. So hopefully everyone is having a lot of fun with their slime. Russell definitely is. He's putting the slime in the jar now. So I have um, a few more minutes so I can go back and help with the hat questions. Um, were there any specific questions on the hat that I can help answer? <laughs> I don't think some of them is gonna fit in. Um, that's all right. Sure, the good. questions we had before weren't really specific. They were just um, like a general, can we go over the whole hat, but we'll wait. A little see if someone else asks any specific ah. questions. So in the meantime, oh, yes. I can I can go over the process again for any people that just wanted to go back. Okay, good. Will you go wash your hands, please? Please. Thank you. Russell's gonna go wash his hands because they are crazy messy right now. So for the hat. Um, I imagine that people had questions more on the application of the uh, pieces to the hat itself. So I'm going to quickly see if I can just cut this out and see if we can start that again. Or I wonder if there's a way for me to disassemble my hat. Let's see. And if you get any specific questions, please just let me know and I'm happy to jump to that part. Sure thing. So again, kind of speed version of the hat is tracing out the different shapes onto the felt. And cutting those out. Okay, that's fine. Just use a paper towel, buddy. Okay. don't have any specific questions about the hat yet, but um, someone is asking if, um, if this is slime we can play with. Yes, absolutely. So that's sort of the point of the activator. So whichever activator you use, um, it does sort of take away the glue consistency of the glue and makes it a little bit more um, of a slime consistency to play with. So as you can see, this is Russell's version that has all of the glittery mix-ins into it. Well, not all of them, but some. This is the one that we had made earlier, which you can tell we had used um, a regular white glue versus a clear glue and uh, did not use as much of the food dye. So it didn't get as dark as this. So really the slime can be as dark, as light, as messy. Um, as you want it. Let's see if I can open this up real quick. So as you can see, this is the consistency of the slime that we made earlier. And it 
Ooh. It's very, that way I touch it. It's very, it's very slimy. <laughs> so you can, you can definitely play with it. There's a Russell. Russell's playing with it. <laughs> it's very solid. All right. So for the hat itself, um, Ashley, you lost video again. Sorry, my call. You're back. Okay, great. So for the hat itself, the uh, first step is to take the lid of the hat and put glue around the edge of the hat and then press your red all the way around the side of it. The second step, and I wish I had another one that I could show you that wasn't um, glued, but the second step would be to take your felt piece for the cone of the hat and do the same where you're wrapping it with glue around the side of the hat. Like this. Then using glue to press the seams of your hat together once it's on the hat itself. The third part of the hat is then to take either the pipe cleaner or feathers or anything else that you may have. And again, gluing it around the lid of the cap, the slime jar cap. And then the last step is just taking your felt pieces for your ears and gluing them onto the sides of the hat as well. And again, if you need the time just to go back through it a little bit more slowly, this will be available online tomorrow or on um, Tuesday within the next 24 to 48 hours. So you can go in and you can stop and pause um, and relook at it again. And then um, I would love to see what you all have made. We made ours with green and red and has his little ears with our little um, things. But as, as we as we showed earlier, you know, your slime can look totally different than ours. Your hat can look totally different than ours. So I would love to see what everyone made. So you can post these online with the hashtag make it with Michaels. And I'd love to see, see your craft. Any other questions in our, in our last minute? No, I think we're all good. Wonderful. Well, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you guys so much again for joining us. Russell and I hope that you will have a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year. And hopefully we'll see you for another class sometime soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.